Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Catching Colorado. And today we are going to be tying up a really fun one. This is an adult parachute damselfly. And I got the idea for this from Charlie Craven, Charlie's Fly Box on YouTube. He also has a store in Arvada, Colorado. Um, but either way, we are going to tie up some damsels. So I was fishing uh, out on the reservoirs in South Park, and I noticed a bunch of damsels coming off, and I knew I had to figure out a way to tie damsels on my own because every fly shop I go into, it is hit or miss if you're gonna end up finding a damsel or not. Um, so that being said, I've come up with a fun little pattern that I think works well. Um, this particular pattern is tied on a U001. This is a size 14 um, and it is a dry fly hook. I think Charlie uses a short shank hook. However, I didn't have any and I really think this pattern shines when it's a little bit longer of a thorax. Um, so that being said, we are going to get started here. I am starting with UTC 70 thread. You could do 140, doesn't really matter here with the thread situation. Usually with foam, I'd say tie a little bit heavier thread, but this foam is so thin and there's so little of it that I don't think it really quite matters. So I've started my thread there, just building up my thread base, and I'm going to come to just about a little over halfway down the hook. And then I'm going to stop there, and this is where this pattern gets really unique. So Basically, we want to build the body, the long tail of the fly. And um, I agree with Charlie in the sense that most damselflies that you tie have really, really big patterns. Um, and damsels just are not that big. Um, so I was hoping to tie something a little smaller, and I think Charlie came up with the perfect solution here. So what he sells and what you can find is macrame yarn. I bought it off his website just because that was the, the easiest for me. But he uses two different colors of macrame yarn. So one is a light blue and one is a dark blue. And so what we're going to do is we are gonna take about, I don't know, I would say 10 to 12 fibers of each. So we don't want a ton. And we are also going to uh, make them about double the length of what we think our body might be. Maybe a little bit even more than that. Um, and I'll explain that here in just a second. So now that I have got my fibers, that's about all that I'm gonna use, is about 10 or 12 of each. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically line them up, grab opposite ends of them, and just start twisting. So you're twisting them up so that they get kind of tangled together. Um, and so we're just pulling and twisting, and the more you twist, the better it is. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna just kind of bend it in the middle, and I'm gonna start to get that body to roll a little bit. And if you just let it kind of unfoil on itself, you now have this rolled up damsel tail. It's perfect. Um, and then if you wanna just make it a little bit tighter, after you get it done, you can kind of twist it up a little bit. And there is our perfect damsel tail. So then I'm gonna take that damsel tail and I'm gonna hang off about an inch and a half off the back of the hook. Do one, two loose wraps, just like that. And then really kind of pull it down. And then while holding the tail towards you on your side of the hook, then you can kind of take those wraps all the way back just to really secure it in on top. And that right there, is about perfect. Then we're gonna take the end of that uh, damsel tail and we're gonna snip it close. And then I'm going to roll that thread forward just to really lock her in. So then starting about the mid point of the hook, we are going to get a thin piece of foam. This is a two millimeter foam, but I have cut it to just shy of a hook gap. Um, maybe even a little bit more than that, but you want this piece to be thin. We don't need a ton of foam on this. This will help it float, 
um, but we don't need a ton of foam here. So I'm going to lock down the front of this foam and walk it back to where we want our tail to kind of pick up. And I am just going to really lock in that foam ending right at the back of the hook. And then we have just this very long post here. Um, I like to trim it up just so much so that it stands up. If you have all that extra foam on there, it tends to bend over and we are going to use this as a post. So I like that post standing straight up. Next thing we're going to use is a very specialty feather. They can be kind of expensive, but they're called Cote de Leon feathers. Um, they come from a chicken, I think. And a lot of people use these for uh, Paragon flies. Um, but we are going to use this as basically our wings of the damsel. Um, I've tried a bunch of different colors. Um, so like this one right here is sort of your darker winged pattern. That's a darker Coke de Leon. And then this is the one we're gonna tie in now. A Little bit more speckled, a little bit more barred, kind of a faint feather look. Um, so that's the one we're gonna tie in now. This particular color is a Coke de Leon ginger speckled. So we are going to pull just one feather from the hank. There's a feather. And then we are going to cut most of the fuzz off. And then as we would with any sort of feather that we're tying in, we're gonna clean up the end. So we look like that. And then what I'm gonna do is move this to the back. Might actually pull just a hair a bit more off there. Move this to the back of the fly and we're gonna do three or so capture wraps. And again, leaving the thread at the back of the fly, we're gonna start spinning this Coque de Leon feather around the foam post. And you'll notice these fibers are so thin that if you have any sweat on your hands whatsoever, they will start to bunch up as far as the uh, individual feathers go. Not so worried about that right now. I just am trying to get it spun around three to four times. I want these feathers to be, or I want these uh, spikes to be pretty dense on this fly. So I'm gonna do one more turn here if I can, my hands are very sweaty. If I can just get this one around one more time. There we go, okay. So now we've got uh, that spun all the way around. We have the tip of our feather here. And all I'm doing is just kind of working out the fibers. And then I'm gonna take all of those and kind of hold them back and tie in that main feather. Then don't get rid of this because you're gonna be able to use plenty of these on Paragon flies. So you can cut that out and save that end piece that's perfect for about four Paragon flies. And then you just kind of want to move some of these out of the way if you need, like that one's kind of on its own. Just trim that out and we're looking pretty good there. So we're just going to keep all of that up. And then the next thing we're going to use is a damsel blue, super fine dubbing. And we are going to make a really, really thin noodle. So you don't need anything crazy here. The whole idea of a damsel, especially with this small tail, is we're trying to make the profile pretty small. However, I think length is a good thing. So where Charlie uses a short shank hook, I'm gonna use a little bit longer because I do like on a damsel pattern it to have just a little bit more length to it. Um, I've seen huge damsel flies, um, dragonflies, whatever you wanna call them. They, uh, can be very long in length. So um, I like a little bit longer body here. So we're gonna pull back that Coque de Leon. Um, let me stretch out my noodle here just a little bit. And we are going to start at the back and we are going to work our way forward. Let me slide up my dubbing here and keep working our way forward. And we are going to stop right here about a half an eye length or so behind the eye. Then what we wanna do is we wanna kinda of take these fibers 
And anything that is sort of in the way of this foam coming forward, we're gonna move out of the way. So you can hold that foam forward and then just sort of like peel these Coke de Leon's back like so. And then once we get that laid up over the top of the body, we're gonna take a very loose first wrap and a very loose second wrap. And then we're gonna kind of square all that up and then kind of pull straight down and really kind of get that front bulging there. One other thing I'm going to do with mine here um, that Charlie does not do is I'm gonna tie in some eyes. Most damselflies I've seen, I can see their eyes from 10 feet away. So I feel like a fish is gonna key in on things like that, right? Little small details. So I've got uh, just a standard piece of fishing line here. I'm gonna do a double wrap right over the top and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cross wrap it back, double wrap right over it the other way. And then what I'm gonna do is immediately wrap right behind the eye of the hook and whip finish it out. The tighter that you make those eyes, the less movement they're gonna have. I don't think it really matters. They're pretty much tied in there and I'll show you why in a second. Um, so let me do, whoops a three turn, four turn whip finish. There's three, there's four, and pop it free. And then we're just gonna cinch that down there. And then what we are going to do is we are going to take our scissors and we are just going to chop a very, very tiny post on the end there of the fly and I kind of just mash it down after. I think that helps with a little bit of the head profile. Then what we wanna do uh, to kind of finish out this fly is I like to leave myself with maybe a half an inch on each side. And then uh, the best part here is kind of building the eyes. This is the same thing you do on a mysis shrimp, but these Coke de Leon fibers will burn so fast. So you wanna get your hands on them and hold them. And then just get your lighter close and start beading up that fishing line and working it in and you don't want it to get too close because if it does it's going to end up burning your thread and you're gonna have to start over so we're just working those eyes in i would say that's about good and then you can let go of those fibers and you can kind of start to splay them out a little bit like so now you've got your your fibers there and then i'm going to get a sharpie this is just a, a standard black sharpie and I'm just gonna start coloring right on those eyes. And you'll have to go around them a few times to really get them to darken up. Um, but that's all we're going for, is we just want kind of a dark profiled eye. Don't worry too much if you get it on the body like I did there. The head, I always paint that's little blue stub that we left so that it kind of mimics that damsel. You could put, you know, some black Sharpie on here just to give it a little character. Um, and then you could also, and Charlie doesn't do this either, but you could also bar the top back of the, uh, the damsel. So I'll just kind of take a Sharpie and kind of just put a little barring on the top just to give it a little character. So that right there is pretty much your completed damsel fly. You've got the eyes in there. You have really fine wings. Those Coke de Leon fibers look great. You have a super thin body and the dubbing here and the foam is really gonna help this thing float, especially if you're using a quell or blue ribbon. Um, either way, absolutely beautiful pattern. This is the damsel fly and it's a parachute damsel uh, inspired by Charlie, Charlie's fly box and modified by me. Thank you guys so much for watching Catching Colorado. If you have any comments on this fly, please leave them down below. And if you have any suggestions for future flies for me to tie, uh, please let me know. Always appreciate a like and subscribe, and we will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.